Come on, buddy. Come on. Come here. What are you doing? How's it going, everybody? I am not right right now. <laughs> there we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, so if you're new, my name is Bryce, and I'm camping right now, if you can't tell. I'm out here on a trip. This, this video is going to actually be posted before the actual trip video, so uh, click up here once I... Uh, get that one uploaded I'll, I'll link it up top here you guys can check out see what I'm up to out here but I figured I'm just sitting here waiting on this fire to burn down because I'm gonna uh, cook a steak on it I have uh, a foil wrap of potatoes and and stuff that I'm gonna cook on here and just have a good meal tonight with with my buddy Maverick wherever he's at yeah just killing some time and I got to thinking about another little video that I could put out for you guys something I've been actually thinking about talking about for a while and that's solo backpacking. It's one of those things that's really near and dear to my heart, something that I really get a lot of enjoyment out of. It's definitely more of like a, a type two fun thing where even when you're out uh, solo backpacking, sometimes you wish you could share it with somebody else. You wish someone else was there and it, it gets a little lonely sometimes. Sometimes you get little, little stints of boredom uh, and whatnot, but once you uh, get home from a solo trip, it really just makes you feel good about yourself and and just going out and being able to be independent and do certain things like this by yourself. So I'm going to talk about what uh, draws me to it and why I think other people that haven't went out by themselves should do it. So number one, it's just like a complete uh, different experience than backpacking with other people. You get a bunch of people out, you're talking, you're playing around, you're having a good time. And it, it's just a, such a comforting thing to be around people and to have that fun atmosphere. And when you're solo, that is really not there. You're just there with your thoughts. It's, it's a little bit scarier. Like, even if you're not scared of the woods, like, I camp out all the time and I do a lot of solos. And there's still always that just hint of fear that you just, no one has your back. And it's not really fear so much for me anymore because I'm so used to it. But it is, it just brings you down to earth. And it, you feel a lot closer with nature and a lot co uh, closer with everything. You know, out here it's it's the only thing you got. All you have is yourself and, and trees to talk to, basically. Uh, my biggest solo I ever did is when I flew out to Oregon and I did a eight day backpacking trip out there. I actually did two backpacking trips. I did the Sisters Wilderness and then Timberline Trail. And it was about 100 miles out there by myself and flying across country. I literally remember on the plane on the way out. There he is. Hey, buddy. I remember on the plane thinking, like, I don't know if I'll do this again. It just felt really weird to go on, like, a vacation uh, by myself. I almost felt, like, a little selfish for it. It was weird. It was different. Um, I really had to plan everything out uh, way different because... It was just a, a really different experience, and for me especially, and something that's really, really big uh, with solo backpacking is you have to think of everything and be like super over prepared. So a lot of backpacking trips, I just throw stuff in a bag and I'll go. And I don't like to depend on other people, but there's always that back of my mind thought that's like, I'll be fine. Like it's gonna be fine. When I'm, when I'm flying across country and I'm gonna be deep in Pacific Northwest wilderness where I have no idea what's going on. I spent a lot of time planning for that. Um, I started writing a list on my computer of stuff uh, weeks, actually probably a month before I left, I started making lists and going over everything. It was the most thorough uh, checklist I've ever had for backpacking. And even for uh, like itinerary of what I needed to do, I had printed lists uh, out of like what I need to take with me to the airport, what I need to get out of the car and buy before I hit the trail, what, when I need to uh, pack different bags and stuff that I um, was bringing because I packed for two different backpacking trips. Um, I just basically had an entire list printed out of exactly what I needed to do and someone like me that is very forgetful, like I have ADHD very badly <laughs> and uh, it really really helped me because that trip went flawlessly and it absolutely wouldn't have if I wouldn't if I wouldn't have taken so much preparation so preparation is huge when you're by yourself also you, you gotta know your limits I feel like a lot you need to know what you're capable of so your first solo you definitely don't want to do like 
um, something that you think is going to be super challenging. I mean, if it's your first solo, you shouldn't do anything that's like going to be like real challenging at all. <laughs> so if, if you don't hike a lot and, and like seven to ten mile days are pretty big for you, you might want to try soloing at a five mile day. Solo backpacking and camping is, it, it's so different to me. Like I love sharing experiences with other people, but I equally love sharing them by myself and with nature because it just, the, the smells and the sounds and everything is just, it, they're so amplified when you're by yourself out here. You have no nobody to talk to and you're just out here with your thoughts. It really, you just really get that sense of being unplugged from society. Uh, even if you bring a friend out here, you're bringing part of your life with you. Whenever you come out by yourself, um, you really just get that sense of complete relaxation, complete um, like detox from life. It's, it's really a cool experience. Bringing a dog, that doesn't hurt either. That's still soloing in my mind. They're good, faithful companions. I think that's pretty much pretty much all I had to say. I mean, I could go on a lot. I could just rant all day long about soloing and how much I like it. And it's definitely not for everybody. I know a lot of people that have done it that said they'll probably never do it again. And uh, some people that just have no urge to ever do it, uh, period. And that's cool, that's fine. It's definitely not for everybody. But if you really love nature and you really are, you know, if you like to test yourself, test your limits, and uh, put yourself in situations that might make you a little bit uncomfortable, it's definitely for you. And the great thing about it also is you don't have to coordinate with other people. You can go whenever you want. It's so hard, especially as adults, to get a group of friends uh, together and get off work the same amount of days and, and make, make it happen. I know a lot of you guys that backpack might only realistically be able to get out once or twice a year. People have lives and kids and it, it just doesn't always happen. It doesn't mean you can't go out and enjoy nature by yourself. But yeah, just getting ready to cook up this fat bad boy here, Angus beef. Look at the thickness on that. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, make sure you guys check out that video. That's going to be, what is today? Yeah, that's gonna be the next video posted is the, the actual trip here. I'm out here just living it up, doing a fall camp. It's November, getting chilly out. It's tarp season. But that's gonna do it for this little rant. Thanks for uh, watching that. Sorry if the footage is kind of grainy. Uh, it's, it's pretty dark. My camera's not doing well with it right now. But uh, subscribe for more stuff like this uh, in the future. If you are into this, hit that like button. I'll leave a comment below uh, on your alone backpacking experiences. Do you like to solo? Do you not like to solo? Uh, I'd like to hear some people's input on that one. So leave a comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.